we're now going to add our building envelope to our site. Now this is our terrain and this is just the story, where, this story we're going to use just for our terrain mesh. So in order to draw the site, in order to draw the house, we're going to draw that on both or either the lower ground floor and upper ground floor. Now we see that we can't see it. So how do we ensure that we can see what's happening? We want to not copy it, but we want to be able to trace reference it. So in order to be able to trace reference, we want to go up to the upper ground floor and then we want to right click on the terrain and say show as trace reference. Now that's going to allow us to see the trace reference in a, a red color or a caramel color depending on what it is. So you might have a box on your screen that looks like these two boxes trace reference settings. If we click on that and go down to the bottom, trace reference, then we can change our reference to any color that we want. I'm going to leave it as red just so it's very easy to identify. Now generally what we want to do is to be able to recreate a surface. So I'm going to just use Archicad layer at the moment because this allows us to draw, uh, basically we can't turn it off. I'm going to use the double dash line because this is a good line to use as a boundary line and I'm going to change this at the moment just to pen one again. Now just like before we could make this a bit faster. Uh, this is a rectangle box so we can with the trace reference see it but we can also click on it so if I hover over I can actually my mouse turns to a tick and when it turns to a tick that means I'm in the corner. This time I'm going to use the rectangular method just to show you a different way. So we'll click on that top left, wait till it's a tick, left click, and then we'll go down to the bottom right, wait till it the pen turns solid black. That means I know I'm over my intersection, click, and now I've got a polyline, meaning multi-lines, but it's all grouped together. It's all one element and I can edit it as one element, but that's my boundary as defined from tracing the terrain story. All right, now we need to set out our building based on our setbacks to this line. Now let's look at some smart, some clever ways of doing that. I need to know what my setback requirement is. So I'm going to set back or set offset my house, I'll use this green line, from the rear boundary, 8,540. I could do this a few ways. I could draw a line, hold shift, press R or D, and type in 8540, enter. I could draw a line that way. This line had an arrowhead. Let's turn that one off because that's a bit annoying. Alt, update that setting. So we could do it that way. Or we could draw a line and we could use our offset tool, offset constraints, if you have that one, if you don't, I'll show you a good place to find that one. I'll just show you this and then I'll describe it. So we'll now draw a line, draw a line, and then we'll offset in that direction, 8540. Now both of those give me the same result in effect. They've both given me a, a distance. The only advantage of this one is that it's given me uh, a full line, whereas the other one just gave me a reference point. Now if you want to use this offset constraints, I've created a palette here, or a toolbar, which makes this very easy to define. Um, later on we'll look at how to create a toolbar, but we can do that, we can interact with those by going to Window, Toolbars, these are our available toolbars, and I've made one called Archied Main. We also have palettes and existing toolbars. Now if you want to find that offset constraint option. The easiest way to find that is use the palette tool, go down to the one that's called control box, and the control box has this option here. If we hold this down, yours probably looks like a T to begin with. I have to turn that off, <laughs> it's not letting me do it. But this is the one that I want to use. I want to use this multi-offset. That's the best one for this purpose. And we're going to drag and drop this down, or dock is another word for that. We're going to dock this one down the bottom. And when we draw a line, we just need to make sure that that is selected. Draw the line, 
offset in the direction we want to go, type that in, 8540, enter. This is multi, so I could keep going and going and doing as many as I want, but I just press escape when I've had enough, when I've drawn what I need to draw. Now I can do this in the other direction, so again I can turn that on, and now I can draw a line mapping this boundary and do the same thing, but this time we're going to call it 900. Again, I can press escape. Now this intersection is the point where my house sits. So I could get my hotspot and put a hotspot there. Now I don't use hotspots that much, but it's going to be useful in this instance because the reality is those lines aren't supposed to be straight. So I've got a hotspot, that's the corner, one set out point of my house. Now we can do the same thing again. I know that from that point I'm supposed to go across 9490. So this is just um, measurements that I've taken on site. And I know I'm supposed to go up. So in this case I'll draw a different way. Draw up this way. And this point needs to be 1240. So now I've got a line and I've got a distance, but those two aren't actually lining up. Why is that the case? Because I know I want the length of my wall to be 9490, but we can see that the angle of my wall is not going to be straight or flat to my boundary. So how do I do that? So instead of drawing this as a line, if I draw this instead as a circle, Alex again changes to ArchiCAD for now, and we might make it green again just to be consistent. If I draw this as a circle, then I could move this line across until it intersects. The other way of saying that, I could draw another line at the required height, offset, 1240, and where this line intersects, that is the wall length of my building. So I can put another hotspot there. So we see that our building isn't straight to our boundary. And I knew that that was going to be the case, but we still wanted to make our life simple by drawing our site on that straight angle rather than on, an, on a skewed angle. Everything else we do is now going to be set out based on this line and the fact that this line isn't straight. Now we don't want to draw our house on an angle, so what we're going to do is rotate the entire project, everything we've done to date. How do we do that? Control L, I want to turn on all of my layers. I don't want to be missing any of the information. I want to make sure that my grouping is maybe suspended. It won't make a difference for what we're doing, but if we're stretching it would. I want to be able to see everything, so I'm going to show, turn on trace reference, and now I'm going to rotate all of my site information so it's related, so it's relevant to what I'm doing here. So I'm going to use my marquee tool, and when I use my marquee tool, I'm going to use my thick marquee tool. So that's the thick marquee, that's the thin marquee. Thin marquee will only affect one story. The thick marquee will affect every story. So we want to change this to every story, and we're going to rotate this all around so this line is now straight. So to do this, I'll use the rotate tool, but because I've got the marquee, that means it's going to affect every story. Edit, move, rotate, and now I need to do this very carefully. This is my set out point. Down the bottom of my screen, it tells me what to do. Enter rotation, arc, start point. What does that mean? where my rotation point was, and I now need to move this down until this is flat. Now I've moved or rotated my entire site so it's no longer straight, but now so this wall is straight. This line, this set out point is accurate, and I can now draw the rest of my building based on this line. So I will move up, straight line, 90 degrees, press D, type in the distance, 12865. <coughs> now I'm going to draw these as a box, and then I will 
dimension it for you so you can copy me. And I'm drawing this in a which direction? Uh, counterclockwise direction. This isn't very important for lines, but it becomes very important when we're drawing walls and when we're drawing beams. Even more important for beams than it is for walls. So let's continue around in this direction. Seven, six, seven, five. And each time I'm making sure that I'm drawing straight because I want each of these to be at 90 degrees to each other. R, three, nine, zero, zero. And do one more this way. One, eight, one, five. And if everything was done according to plan, then when I move down here, we see that the angle says 90 degrees, which means we've drawn it all straight. So all of those numbers line up. The angle is 90 degrees. The distance is a, is a comfortable five millimeter round number. So that's brilliant. If we had a not rounded number, if that was a one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, then I'd know that I'd made a mistake somewhere. And if that angle wasn't 90 degrees, I'd know I'd made a mistake somewhere. But that's the outline of my house. So I'll dimension that for you, and then you can copy that size based on the dimensions that I use. <coughs> Let's change that scale down to 1 to 100 now, so it's a little bit smaller. And it's, of course, not absolutely necessary to dimension all four sides of these, but it will make it easier for you to read if I do. Now, let's finish this off because I maybe jumped between those other parts a bit too fast. So we see that that distance there is 900. And that's how we set it out. So I'll leave this with you, I'll leave this for you to start uh, trying to recreate and I will help you in order to set that out properly.